Hi, I'm Alan and this is just a first recording. What I'm going to be doing is showing you how I put this particular scene together. This is one of my main characters, Sam. And I'm just going to play it through and then I'm going to make a copy of the scene, delete some of it and show you how I put it back together again. So first, this is the effect on what I'm after. So you can see Sam is bobbing up and down and I've got a sort of parallax effect going on in the background. So the background looks like it's getting further away. So it looks like you, the camera is following Sam and he's walking towards the camera. So that's the effect I'm after. So how do we go about doing this? Well, what I'm going to do is come up here and I'm going to duplicate the scene, which is Control D. So I've picked the scene from over here. You notice it's put a number on the end. It's got number two there. So it's whatever the old scene name was. Um, but I'm going to give it a different name, so um, just so I know to get rid of it later on. So I'm just going to call it Temp. So if I double click on Temp, I can make sure that it's selected up here. If you only single click or if you duplicate and you don't correctly register the double click, um, you'll actually still be editing the old scene, which is a problem. So I always come up here to the timeline heading and actually check that it's actually got my new one. And I'm going to delete a number of parts of this and we're going to add them back in. So I'll push this down out of the way. There's some different things. We're not actually using any of this. So I'm going to just delete it. These were some um, sound effects, but I ended up doing all the sound effects over in Premiere Pro for this particular scene. And I'm going to get rid of the scale. So I'm just clicking here. I don't want to click up here on this bar because it will get rid of the background scene altogether. I just want to get rid of the scale because we're going to redo that one. Uh, we see how we go. So what are all these handles? Um, what I've actually done is the character's hands are normally sticking out sideways, but I want them coming down nicely. Um, if you hold down the Alt key and if you've got a wheel on your mouse, you can zoom out. And so I'm using the middle button and I'm holding down the Alt key while I'm doing this. And so you can see his arms are coming down here and just makes it look a little bit more natural. If I turn these off, I can see what it's going to be like to turn these things off. Um, actually, the triggers I don't need at all. There are no triggers, so we can just get rid of that one. But the you can see I used a transform and I just recorded a value just to put him within the scene so his head centered nicely. And then the drag is I've dragged his hands down. So if I re enable the dragger, so I'm not going to bother doing those parts. But what I want to do first then is to get him to how to get him to bob up and down. And so um, this particular one was actually one of the very early, early scenes I did and I used the transform on the X and Y. Uh, these days what I tend to do to try and carry, uh, center him is if I select Sam over here, click single click over here and I come over onto the properties panel over on the right. Under transform, you've actually got anchor X and Y and position X and Y. Um, and so what I'm going to be doing is actually recording new Y values here. I tend to use the anchor point to get it uh, fundamentally in place and then use the positions within. So the difference between these two is one is affected before the scale and one affects after the scale. But I find it useful having both sets of values. Sometimes I use one, sometimes I use the other and uh, put them all together. But let's come back to sort of say, okay, how do I get him to bob up and down? So if I look at this Y value, if I put the cursor over the number, you see the little arrows come, I can now move it up and down. And so one way is to just try and record just going up and down like that. And sometimes I do that, but I tend to find that um, I don't get it very regular. Every bounce has got a slightly different height to it because I'm just moving the cursor up and down here. You can also move it side to side if you like. So I found that was uh, too hard. And so instead what I did was a different approach. I've got him recorded, I've got position Y armed, everything else is disarmed. So if you hold down the control key when you click on this button, it turns everything, either everything on or everything off. So I'm going to make sure everything's off, but then I want position Y armed, and when I arm that value, so the transform is armed as well. So it's only going to record position Y, which is what I'm after. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start recording. So I've just got it at the beginning of the timeline, don't really care. I'm just going to do a record and 
I've got it pausing for three seconds, so now it's starting recording, so great. So what I'm gonna do is grab this value and move it about where I think I want to end off. And then I'm gonna record a little bit more and stop the recording. So I've got this really long recording now, and you might say, why on earth do you have all that? And how can I use that? Well, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get rid of most of the beginning of this side. Uh, the reason for this is this is all the time that was set on the default value and then it adjusted to the new value and I got it just right. So by trimming from this um, left edge, I'm gonna get rid of all that. And then I'm gonna drag it back over here. So if I come along, he's got one value, and you know, hey, should he be bobbed up instead of down? Oh, well, too bad. Then uh, if I zoom in on this one, so just down here where they've got this one, you can make it a little bit uh, more visible. And so during this value, he's at one height, and then he goes back to the other height. I don't know if you, you saw that. So when we transition here, he's really jumping between two positions. And so I've got this wonderful clean recording, so I recorded it for a second or two. So what I'm gonna do now is I found that a step seems to be quite natural at about three quarters of a second. Um, girls, I do a little bit faster at about two thirds of a second. On, on the... And then if, if you click up in this top little corner here, you might see there's some little squares up there and you can see hopefully, um, hopefully it's not too small on the screen, but on the top, right corner and the top left corner of this bar, which was the new recording I just made, is a little square. And I'm gonna drag that back towards the middle for both of these two squares. And so the end result is I've got this little hump. So I don't know if you can see it very well, hopefully you can, but I've basically dragged both edges in. And so what happens now is I drag through here, his Y value goes up and this is called blending. And what it's doing is instead of me recording a particular height, it's sort of saying use the default value and then transition up to the new value, which is the recorded one, and then transition smoothly back. And so by using these blends, I can get this smooth transition from the old value to the new value. I then still select it. I'm doing a type control D, which is to duplicate. So I've got another step. And I just slide that along, get them to line up, duplicate again, Control D, slide along, Control D, slide along. Now, for this scene, you might have noticed when I recorded it, the duration has got extended way out here. What I often do, um, and I forgot to do it in this case, is I often put a marker where the end value was, because every time we re-record and go beyond the end, it keeps extending it. And there's um, currently no way to stop that that I know of. So I'm gonna come back to the old scene and said, okay, it seemed to be around about six seconds. So I'm gonna set, if I single click on temp, yeah, so if you double click, it goes in, or single click, it goes into a moment. So single click on temp. Over here in the properties, I've got a duration property. I'm gonna set that back to six, because that's where I think the old one was. Uh, and then I can come back to click on the Sam, the puppet, and I haven't got enough footsteps yet, so I'm gonna do Control D again, drag it along, Control D, drag it along, Control D. This is the exciting part. And great, so let's come back to the beginning and we hit play and you'll see he's bobbing up and down. And with heads and shoulders, that's basically how I do the walking sort of thing. So I'm just gonna do one more example of a blend. So we've got, this time I'm selecting the background. So I've actually got a background image behind my character. So the background is just, um, it's just a picture, it's another artwork file. I've just dragged it in as an artwork file, so it's made it a puppet. It doesn't have anything, it doesn't have any arms or legs. Like if I turn it off, you see it's, there's nothing behind him. So I just um, click the little eye there next to it just to turn it back on. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do another transition, but this time I'm gonna do it for the background image. So I want the background image, if we come over here and just 
I'm just dragging up the, the scaling so you can see the background sort of sliding and so I'm going to pick a value um, yeah something like that looks a good and so as he bobs up and down I want the background to slide like that because I want a clean transition I'm going to do a slide again um, and so what I've got to do um, so I'm going to come over here brought the cursor back to the beginning now the default value here is 100 so I'm going to go from 160 down to 100 so if it's not armed and I change a value uh, the default value of that puppet is going to uh, the value for the puppet is going to change. But if I hit record, I actually stuffed up something a little bit before, and um, you might have noticed I've just uh, redone the edit because I learnt something during the video and I think about it. Um, if you turn on the record value and then change it and then start recording. And stop recording this is all the value of 170 you'll see this values drop back to 100 and so when it's armed and you change it when you record it's going to keep that value but it hasn't changed the default value for the puppet so if I look this is transition if you see in the background it's sort of jumping between the two excuse me two scale values so I'm just going to pull that out to the full length I'm going to go a bit beyond, um, I'll explain why in a moment. So I grabbed the top right corner, and I'm going to drag that back over to the left, and so now I've got this blend, and if you remember it was around about 160 or something, 170, can't remember, and then it's going to slide back to the 100. So if we go back to the beginning and I start playing, you'll see the background getting further and further away during due to the scale. And you've got to get the um, the values right. I just did that roughly. Um, you can do exactly the same thing with your X or the Y. And so if you want to move it sideways, instead of recording a blend for the scale, I do it per position. And I do a bit beyond because you might notice this line is not a straight line. It's got a bit of a curve at the start and the end. And so it gets slower towards the end, um, which looks a bit weird. He's walking along and suddenly the background doesn't move as fast as it used to. So that's why I sort of pull it this out a little bit further to get more of the straight part there. And if it gets bad during the beginning, I'll trim off the beginning of the scene as well. As you can see, it's going a little bit faster now on the zoom. Whereas at the beginning, it was going a bit slow. And so, you know, unfortunately, there's no way you can adjust the shape of this curve. Um, it's just how it is. Um, cool and so that's another example of using a blend so arm it type in a new value record drag it out to whatever length you need or just record the whole value and then grab the corner and do the blend and that's how you get smooth transitions so that's two examples of a blend one to do the hopping up and down for the y position and here's the other blend for the scale to make the background change distance hope that was interesting bye